evening. This is Dr. John. Good evening. This is Dr. John Bennett from Miami, Florida. We're, we're broadcasting a live Google Hangout with uh, Dr. Abdul Rana, a neurologist and noted Parkinsonism educator from Toronto, Canada. Um, and tonight, Dr. Rana is going to be talking about Lewy body dementia and Parkinson's. Good evening, Dr. Rana. Good evening, Dr. Bennett. Okay, the first question is obvious. So what the heck is a Lewy body? Uh, Lewy bodies were uh, described uh, initially by, uh, by a German pathologist, Frederick Lewy, in 1914. And these are cytoplasmic inclusions in the cells of Substantia nigra, which he described initially. And uh, by 1970, Lewy body inclusions were identified in the neocortex of the brains of dementia patients. So Lewy bodies are named uh, uh, on Frederick Lewy's name, uh, who discovered them in 1914. And uh, uh, these are um, cytoplasmic inclusions. Uh, they, have a, uh, they have a dense core surrounded by a halo. And uh, they are characteristic of uh, Parkinson's disease, as well as uh, dementia of Lewy body disease. So there are certain differences, which we'll discuss uh, in this hangout, uh, as well as in the next one. Uh, so uh, the dementia of uh, Lewy bodies was considered a rather uh, uncommon disorder uh, by, uh, by mid 1980s, uh, when the immunostaining uh, became more uh, widely used uh, at that time, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was noted that uh, it is a quite uh, a common neurodegenerative condition uh, as compared to, uh, yeah, as compared to it, it was considered before. Okay, it's not particular to Parkinson's, it's any dementia. Yeah, yeah it, it, is, uh, it is sensitive for Parkinson's disease, but not specific. Okay. It is also found in the dementia fluid body disease. Okay, very good. Okay, can you give some, I guess you gave a little historical background right there. Uh, do you want to say any more? You want to go on to the next question? Uh, the um, uh, Lewy body dementia is uh, believed to be the second most common cause of uh, degenerative dementias mm -hmm. in, in the elderly population, in the seniors especially. And uh, about 15 to 30% of all dementia patients uh, may turn out to be a diffuse Lewy body disease. It may not be recognized early on. And uh, upon the postmortem examination, uh, the Lewy body aggregates may be found in about uh, one third of patients with Alzheimer's disease. And uh, those patients could be referred to as uh, a, a Lewy body variant of Alzheimer's uh, disease. Uh, and uh, these cases, um, uh, these cases present an overlap syndrome of the Lewy body disease mm -hmm. and the Alzheimer's disease. How common is Lewy body dementia? The Lewy body dementia uh, is um, seen in about uh, 15 to 30 percent of uh, uh, patients with dementia overall, and uh, it is the second most common cause of uh, degenerative dementia in seniors according to most of the reports. The mean age of onset is 75 years, and uh, there's a slight uh, uh, male predominance. Uh, the diffuse Lewy body disease or dementia with Lewy body disease, uh, it progresses uh, relatively rapidly, and uh, the mean survival of these patients is uh, about 10 years, eight to 10 years. Uh, however, some patients uh, uh, could uh, die within uh, within a couple of years. Uh, there are certain uh, factors, uh, uh, there are certain risk factors for increasing mortality in these patients, including dementia, uh, fluctuation in cognitions, uh, older age, and hallucinations at the onset of the disease. So if these factors are present, uh, these patients would be considered at a higher risk of mortality. Uh, these patients have a neuroleptic sensitivity uh, about uh, about those patients who have uh, uh, high neuroleptic sensitivity, they also 
have higher risk of mortality. And uh, uh, some reports have suggested uh, some familial cases of uh, dementia baduy bodies, but uh, usually it's considered a sporadic condition. Okay, what are the common presenting features? In the early on in these patients, uh, it could be quite difficult to differentiate uh, from other conditions such as Alzheimer's disease or sometimes uh, idiopathic Parkinson's disease. These patients uh, usually have a rapid cognitive decline. They have deficits of attention early on in the course of disease. Uh, the dementia or uh, the cognition uh, is uh, the main presenting uh, feature, uh, the trouble with cognition. The cognitive fluctuations uh, happen in these patients with much higher frequency. Sometimes they could be coherent and alert at other times. They could have episodes of confusion and disorientation and change in level of consciousness as well as uh, psychosis. The, the fluctuating cognition could um, cause problems with the assessment uh, because depending upon the, uh, depending upon the uh, condition of the patient when they are being assessed. So uh, the assessment may uh, give different results if they are coherent uh, and uh, the stable during that time, so assessment could be different as compared to if they are going through a fluctuation in level of uh, in their level of alertness. So the result of the assessment could be different. Uh, these patients uh, could have excessive daytime drowsiness, excessive daytime sleepiness, which is usually uh, longer than an hour and a half, and uh, uh, they also could have slurred speech uh, and. Uh, uh, they could be sometimes staring, uh, just staring in, uh, uh, staring uh, uh, absently with, without any cause. Uh, and uh, uh, the, these patients, uh, because they do develop uh, uh, features of Parkinsonism, so it becomes difficult to differentiate them uh, from idiopathic Parkinson's disease. So uh, most experts uh, uh, follow a, a rule of one year. Uh, occurrence. So uh, if the cognitive difficulties and uh, hallucinations uh, and fluctuation level of consciousness, so these difficulties uh, start with in either before uh, the onset of Parkinsonism or within one year of the onset of Parkinsonism, then uh, they consider the diagnosis of dementia with Lewy body disease. But if these symptoms occur uh, uh, more uh, than a year or with, uh, after a few years of the onset of uh, uh, features of Parkinsonism, then uh, most experts would say that it is a case of uh, dementia with the Parkinson's disease. Uh, the um, 80 percent, um, most of the patient or about 80 percent of the patient uh, would experience uh, the fluctuations uh, and the hallucinations. The hallucinations are uh, quite psychotic and uh, these patients uh, have uh, quite complex hallucination. They're rich in content and color and detail. They involve uh, humans or animals. Uh, and uh, we have seen patients who had uh, very detailed hallucinations. They would, uh, uh, they would uh, describe uh, the uh, stories of uh, talking to people they saw during these episodes, uh, uh, although these uh, people had diseased uh, some time ago, uh, and uh, uh, sometime uh, they would describe the kids um, uh, in their front lawn or uh, people um, in their house, uh, and they give quite uh, detail. Uh, most of the time, these hallucinations are uh, uh, not frightening. In certain cases, they could be upsetting uh, or they could be uh, frightening to the patients, uh, although it uh, happens. Uh, much less often. These patients uh, sometimes may be amused by these hallucinations, or they might uh, uh, have uh, a bit of apathy or uh, inattention. Uh, the um, hallucinations uh, may be accompanied by confusion or agitation, and REM behavioral disorders are also common in these patients. Uh, the uh, hallucinations uh, uh, could occur more commonly than the uh, psychotic episodes in these patients. Uh, most of these patients would develop uh, 
akinetic rigid type of syndrome uh, without any tremor. Uh, so the, uh, their symptoms of rigidity in bradykinesia or akinesia are usually symmetrical. They are usually on both sides. Although they could be asymmetrical in certain cases, some patients could have an action tremor and a myoclonus as well. And sometimes the myoclonus may start uh, before the onset of dementia in these patients. Uh, uh, few patients, uh, very few patients may have a subtle uh, uh, one-sided resting tremor, which may affect only thumb or their index finger or just the, just the hand, although it's quite mild and is seen in a small number of patients. Uh, these patients could uh, have trouble with their balance. They could fall frequently. They have difficulty with their gait as well. The gait and postural uh, instability um, could uh, become prominent as the disease progresses. In addition, these patients could be slow in performing their repetitive movements. Their gait could be shuffling as well. And uh, that shuffling pattern of gait uh, may make it difficult to differentiate them from idiopathic Parkinson's disease in some cases. What, these what, I'm sorry, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, as I said, these patients may fall frequently, and um, they do have uh, they uh, they do have depression in a significant number of patients. Transient loss of consciousness could happen in these patients, and uh, they are quite sensitive to neuroleptics. Uh, the neuroleptic sensitivity could happen at much lower dose of neuroleptics, and even with the atypical neuroleptics, which are quite safe. Uh, the, these patients also, uh, these patients also uh, get worse uh, uh, with the dopaminergic medications. Their hallucinations may become worse sometimes. Uh, they could respond well or better, at least, to the cholinesterase inhibitors. So they are, therefore, uh, uh, rivastigmine may be help, uh, uh, um, may be helpful in these patients. It could not only help in cognitive dysfunction, but it could also uh, help to decrease uh, uh, the hallucinations. Uh, patients also have a combination of cortical and subcortical neuropsychological impairment, such as deficits of attention and visual spatial dysfunction. And uh, these patients have uh, particular difficulties uh, in, uh, in in copying figures uh, and uh, uh, their memory storage uh, may exceed the memory uh, retrieval. Uh, these uh, about uh, 30 to uh, 40 percent of patients uh, would develop depression sometime in the course of the disease. Uh, the rate of depression is almost uh, as close as in idiopathic Parkinson's disease. Orthostasis or lightheadedness um, upon assuming upright position is also. Uh, common in these patients, uh, although it could be asymptomatic in some cases. And in other cases, patients may have uh, episodes of syncope. Uh, the symptomatic orthostasis uh, is uh, less common in these patients than the other types of atypical Parkinsonism, such as multiple system atrophy. However, when autonomic dysfunction appears early on, in these patients. So some patients may be misdiagnosed as multiple system atrophy. Usually autonomic dysfunction appears later in the course of uh, the Lewy body disease in most patients. The rate of progression of uh, the dementia with Lewy bodies is uh, faster than Alzheimer's disease. And uh, if you do MMSC uh, and uh, uh, on every visit and then compare their MMSC scores annually, they usually would show at least four to five points of drop of MMSC score every year. And uh, the disability in uh, dementia with Lewy bodies progresses uh, uh, a bit faster than idiopathic Parkinson's disease or at least equivalent to idiopathic Parkinson's disease. Uh, lack of uh, lack of mobility due to slowness of movements, swallowing problems, uh, and pneumonia are uh, common in these patients. Uh, and uh, uh, because of lack of mobility, these patients may be bed bound for longer period, which could uh, lead to skin ulcers. 
and uh, aspiration and pneumonia could be a, uh, a cause of hospitalization and, uh, and death in many patients. Well, you kind of addressed this partially uh, before about the pathological uh, changes in the first question. Is there any other remarks you want to say about the pathological changes in the brains of these patients uh, in Parkinson's uh, In case of dementia with Lewy body disease, the cortical Lewy bodies are considered the pathological hallmark of dementia with Lewy body disease. They do have Lewy neurites, uh, uh, and cortical senile plaques and spongiform changes. Uh, these uh, Lewy bodies, they are concentric uh, cytoplasmic inclusions and uh, they do have a non membrane bound granulofilament structure. Most Lewy bodies are single and spherical, but sometimes they could be multiple and they could be pleomorphic as well. The Lewy bodies usually they have a dense amorphous central uh, core. Uh, with a periphery which is composed of the radially arranged uh, uh, filaments. If you use an electron microscope uh, to examine uh, these brains, so you can see the Lewy neurites, they, they, they have haphazardly organized filaments and they do lack a dense core. Uh, the uh, main component of uh, these Lewy bodies is alpha synuclein and uh, uh, the cholinergic neurons of the basal forebrain uh, as well as the monoaminergic uh, neurons of the locus ceruleus, dorsal nucleus of vagus, uh, and substantia nigra are the common sites where these Lewy bodies are seen in patients with dementia, Lewy body disease. The Lewy bodies do occur in the posterior and lateral hypothalamus, but they are sparse or much infrequent in the basal ganglia or in thalamus. The postmodern uh, studies of uh, these brains would uh, occasionally show Lewy bodies in the substantia in nominata as well as dorsal raphe nuclei. The Lewy bodies uh, are uh, the dementia of Lewy bodies. It, it, it is, its course is usually correlated with the cortical denervation of the cholinergic neurons and the reduction in the choline acetyl transferase uh, activity. Very good. Um, let's see, what are the key diagnostic features of Lewy body disease? Uh, the patients, uh, when they are presenting initially, uh, they would be presenting with uh, any other uh, uh, neurodegenerative dementia. So uh, the physicians in the early cases have to be uh, very keen and vigilant and have to take a very detailed and in-depth history and do a physical, assess uh, physical examination with a very detailed cognitive assessment to conclude uh, or um, find out the diagnosis of dementia with Lewy bodies. Usually these patients' uh, uh, main complaint is cognitive decline, uh, confusion, a fluctuation in level of consciousness, episodes of disorientation, visual and or, and or auditory hallucinations. The auditory hallucinations are much less common as compared to visual hallucinations. The cognitive uh, dysfunction is enough to interfere with the, the social activities as well as other uh, activities of daily life and their performance at work if they're still working. The dementia does progress much more rapidly as compared to Alzheimer's disease or even as compared to idiopathic Parkinson's disease. And they do have associated aphasia or dyspraxia uh, and spatial disorientation. And uh, in addition, they have extra pyramidal motor symptoms. If you compare this with uh, the dementia of Alzheimer's type, uh, the uh, cognitive deficits in the dementia of Lewy body disease, they are more acute in the fluctuation in attention, they are more severe. And also the executive dysfunction is uh, more prominent. The psychotic episodes are much more frequent and not only they are more frequent, but they are also much earlier. The memory deficits, uh, especially the recall, uh, they are 
they are a bit less severe as compared to Alzheimer's patient and they could be a little bit late. The early onset of cognitive deficits and uh, psychotic features in the presence of the linguistic and uh, visual spatial impairment distinguishes this from the dementia of Parkinson's disease, which also comes in the differential diagnosis of uh, a dementia of Lewy body disease. The diagnosis of dementia of Lewy body disease is uh, considered uh, with much more certainty when the cognitive uh, abnormalities, as I said before, develop either before or within one year of the onset of symptoms of Parkinsonism. The, if a patient has had Parkinsonism for about 12 months or more before they develop the cognitive changes, then the dementia of Parkinson's disease could be more likely. The diagnosis of uh, dementia of Lewy body disease is uh, considered uh, when dementia, visual hallucinations, and the periods of reduced uh, cognitive responsiveness, they precede the motor signs of Parkinsonism. And uh, hallucinations and the periods of reduced cognitive responsiveness, they are more prominent. Also, uh, REM behavioral disorders uh, may be used to support the diagnosis of diffuse life dementia of Lewy body disease because the REM behavioral disorder uh, is uh, early and uh, a bit more frequent in these patients. Uh, there have been some uh, guidelines established, the consensus guidelines for the diagnosis of dementia of Lewy body disease, which can help to differentiate this uh, from the Alzheimer's disease and atypical Parkinsonism. Uh, the, uh, these uh, guidelines uh, uh, are quite helpful in most cases. So they uh, could uh, uh, divide uh, these uh, patients into uh, possible uh, dementia of Lewy body disease and the probable dementia of Lewy body disease. So if there are two core clinical features, uh, then the diagnosis uh, would be uh, probable Lewy body disease uh, dementia. And if there is a one core feature, then it is a possible dementia of Lewy bodies. The um, studies have uh, shown that the sensitivity of uh, diagnosis by using these criteria is about 50%. The specificity is much higher, close to, uh, close to 90%. And uh, if you use these criteria very vigilantly, the diagnostic accuracy does increase. The core features, uh, uh, the core features uh, are fluctuation in cognitive function and visual hallucinations. The central feature of all these patients is a progressive cognitive decline, which interferes in the social uh, and occupational uh, function. Also, in addition to the core features and the central features, the physicians can use the respiratory features. The respiratory features are usually false, syncope, sensitivity to neuroleptic medications, or delusions and hallucinations, REM behavioral disorder, and depression. When these patients are uh, assessed uh, in, uh, the regular, uh, in, in, in the routine and regular clinical encounters, uh, the cognitive uh, impairment is the main uh, focus of the family members uh, and the patients themselves. So the clinician has to take a lead to look at the sportive features because the sportive features, the family members or patients could attribute to other causes or age, such as repeated falls or transit uh, changes in level of consciousness or depression, uh, as well as syncope. Uh, these are common in elderly individuals otherwise. And uh, although these uh, could be the red flags of dementia of Lewy bodies, but the patients may just uh, attribute these to either arthritis or living alone or getting old and so on. The neuroleptic sensitivity uh, and the REM behavioral disorder, they could be highly predictive of dementia of Lewy body uh, type. Uh, overall, the accurate uh, diagnosis of these patients uh, does require a very keen and meticulous assessment of these patients' history, physical examination, and a very detailed uh, 
mental state examination requiring the paper-based testing as well as uh, other cognitive uh, uh, cognitive uh, tests in some time a help of uh, uh, the uh, the experts uh, who deal with these cases could be required and before one uh, one concludes the diagnosis uh, they should try to uh, they should exclude uh, the delirium which could be due to many causes such as medications or infections uh, dehydration uh, or uh, so many other drugs very good dr rana uh, that wraps up part one is there any closing remarks you want to say about louis body dementia and parkinson's before we close uh, dementia with the um, Lewy bodies is a very interesting condition, but at the same time, it is very challenging to tease out the details and differentiate from Alzheimer's disease or idiopathic Parkinson disease or atypical Parkinsonism and dementia Parkinson disease could be quite difficult. So I think on the first assessment, uh, the clinician should do a very detailed, uh, uh, very detailed uh, uh, history, physical, uh, and uh, uh, other paper-based testing, and the patient may need to be uh, seen a second time, and a parallel history uh, from a family member or a caregiver is very important in reaching to a diagnosis. Okay, very good. Okay, that wraps it up for uh, part one of Lewy body dementia and Parkinson's. Stay tuned for part two on Parkinsonism TV, and uh, I'd like to give a shout out Oh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rana. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. And uh, I'd just like to give a shout out to uh, a couple of people watching. Simon Downs, a uh, Japanese medical student, my nega, from uh, Tokyo. He's going to medical school there. And John Hewitt in Philadelphia. Thank you, Dr. Rana. We'll see you for part two. Sure. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you.